This video will cover some tips and Blackboard basics for using the Summer 2020 online course template. This is a full course template that can be copied into an empty course shell and has prompts, resources, and even some built-in orientation materials that you are welcome to use to prepare for your online course this summer. There is a version of the template for both the first eight weeks and the last eight weeks of the 2020 summer term. And you can request either to be copied into a course shell from the Academy for Teaching Excellence. I'll go through each of the links inside the shell and discuss what can be found inside, as well as some Blackboard how-to information to help you customize the course and get it ready for your students. The first link is Announcements. The Announcements page is the home page for your class. It is the first page students will see when they log in to your Blackboard course. Any announcements you place here will be visible to students, and students will also get emailed copies of the announcements. It's a good idea to post at least one welcome announcement at the start of the course. The welcome announcement should introduce yourself, welcome students, and give a first step for them to take to get started. You can draft a welcome announcement from scratch, or you can modify the example announcement available in the sandbox. To modify the existing announcement, click on the gray options arrow next to the subject line and select Edit. Here you can add your own name and contact information, the course name, and a few more personal welcome comments for your students. To make editing easier in any text field in Blackboard, you can click on the lower right of the text box and drag it to make it a little bit larger. To ensure students receive an email of the announcement as well, click on the Send a Copy of this Announcement. When you're ready, click Submit. To draft a new announcement at any time, click on Create Announcement. Then fill in the subject and your message. Remember to click the send a copy of this announcement immediately to ensure that it goes to students' emails. Then click Submit. The next link in the template is Syllabus and Schedule. This is a great place to attach a copy of your syllabus where students can find it easily throughout the course. There is already a placeholder item with the blank Harper College syllabus template attached. You can edit this as needed and can remove this and attach a finalized copy of your syllabus. To edit any item in Blackboard, click on the gray arrow and select Edit. You can adjust this description and can attach your own syllabus by clicking on the Browse My Computer button. Navigating to your syllabus and double clicking on it. You can remove any attachments that you don't want by selecting the Mark for Removal button. When you are ready, you can click Submit. Next we have the Faculty Information tab. This is a place for you to provide your name, contact information, and contact preferences for students, so they have quick access to that throughout the course. You can edit this placeholder information by clicking on the gray arrow and selecting Edit. You must include an email address, but all other fields are optional. If possible, include a short description here in the notes area. Talk about how you prefer to be contacted and how students can expect you to contact them. It's also nice to include a short biography. When you are ready with your changes, you can click Submit. Moving along, we have the Course Materials tab. This is a place designated for standing course policies and resources for use by students. You will see that it is already populated with some items you might wish to keep. First is a standing link to a questions asked and answered discussion board. This is a designated place for students to ask questions about the course and get help from you and one another. There is also a virtual coffee break discussion board to give a place for students to chat about non-course materials. 
We'll talk more about discussion boards a bit later. Also in the course materials area is a Blackboard accessibility and privacy statement and a standard copyright notice. At the bottom are instructions on how you can add a banner to the home page or announcements page of your course. Adding a banner is optional. This item is not visible to students. I can tell this by the fact that it's grayed out versus these items which are more bright in color. Any item in Blackboard can be made available or unavailable to students by clicking on the gray arrow and selecting Make Unavailable or Make Available, as the case may be. If you ever want to test what you have made available to students, you can use this Student Preview button up in the right corner. Clicking on this puts you into your class as a student and you can see what your students see. For example, if I go back to the course materials link, I can't see those banner instructions. That was not made available to students. You can exit student preview by clicking the exit preview button in the upper right. The next and most important link in the course is the learning modules link. This area is set up for you to include all of your course content and assignments and is organized into weekly folders to, for students to follow throughout the semester. A folder has been built for each week of the course. Notice that only the first two folders have been made available to students. You can tell which folders are unavailable because they are grayed out. As mentioned earlier, you can make any of these folders available or unavailable when desired by clicking on the gray arrow to the right of the folder name and selecting Make Available or Make Unavailable as the case may be. The first folder provided is an orientation module which we'll we will return to in a moment. First, let's look into one of the regular weekly modules. We'll look into week one. The first thing provided in each weekly folder is a module overview containing a placeholder to put the learning outcomes that apply to that week, the non-graded activities the students will engage in that week, and the graded or at least submitted assignments the students will participate in that week. As stated, activities are non-graded items the students should review or work through during the week. Module assignments are items that need to be submitted to you by the students, either for a grade or just for you to review. Module assignments will likely have specific due dates, may have points assigned. Inside the activities folder are a couple of prompts for what you may wish to include here. As you can see, these are not available to students and can be deleted at any time by clicking on the gray arrow and selecting delete. Before we delete the prompts, let's go through them and I'll provide some tips on how to make them happen for real in your course. First, as it notes here, you may wish to assign some readings or viewings for the week. This could include an assigned textbook readings, links to websites, articles, or videos. I'll show you some different ways you might add readings or some of these other items. Whenever you're building something in Blackboard, most of the time you're building your basic Blackboard item. So you'll select Build Content and Item. So let's say we want to add readings for week one. You'll want to give your item a heading. So a few different ways you might add things. First, you can type instructions or materials directly into this Blackboard item. So you might say something like, please read chapter one and two of the textbook this week. You may also find that you want to link to something out on the internet that you want students to access. I have found this Chemistry World article on tempering chocolate. To add a link to Blackboard, a great accessible way to do this is to copy the link URL. Inside your item in Blackboard, type a description of the link. And once you have your description written, highlight your description select insert edit link and then paste that link you copied into this link path area. 
I like to have the link open in a new window and click insert. Now your description of the link doesn't have to be this long. This is a cited article, though I don't think I cited it very well. Um, it might just be something like Chemistry World article or something similar. But typing a description, highlighting it, and adding a link makes it much more accessible and clean for students to see. You may also wish to attach documents for students to access and read. When you build an item in Blackboard, it has an attachments area where you can attach one or more files for students to view. Word documents, Excel, really any of the Microsoft Office files will attach very nicely, as will PDFs and images. To attach a file, click on Browse My Computer, search for the file you wish to attach, and then double click on it, and then click Submit. Now you can see I have one item added here. When you have items, you can drag them around by clicking on uh, to the left of the item. You can see that this link is an active link that when clicked on will take you to the resource desired. Students can also click on any attached files and it will download to their computer, or in this case it was a PDF, and I'm in Chrome, so PDF opened right in my browser. Now let me show you how to add a YouTube video. You may want students to view different resources some weeks or all weeks. I'm going to practice building an item again. I'm going to click Build Content Item. This time I will call this Week 1 Videos to Watch. Um, you can type a description of the video if you wish. Then a great resource for adding videos is YouTube. And so the way I really like to add videos is to go to the YouTube video, click on share, click on embed, then click on copy and we're copying all of this code here. You can navigate back to your blackboard shell and inside the text of your item there is a button here that's HTML code view. We copied all that code this will let us paste it right here into the Blackboard item. So I'm going to click on HTML code view. And at the very bottom of your um, of what appears in the code view, so just go to the very end and then paste that code here. Click Update and then click Submit. So now I have a video nicely embedded from YouTube inside uh, Blackboard and I can drag and drop this. So we've taken care of this prompt, assigning reading and viewing for the week. And if, as mentioned, if you wish, you can delete this. The next prompt here asks for instructor interpretation or lecture on the content. So the simplest way to provide some interpretation is to build another item and simply type some text that lets students know these are the things that I want you to look out for in these videos and readings and things like that. You may also wish to build an item and attach a PowerPoint or attach a Word document that writes out your lecture. You can also make your own videos, lecture videos and attach those in here as well. So let's move on to the assignments folder for week one. If we click inside the assignments folder, you'll see we also have some prompts here for some things you could include. A graded discussion board or non-graded, an assignment to submit, or a quiz or test. I'm going to start with this middle prompt here, assignments. The best way to ask students to submit assignments to you in an online class is to make an assignment link in Blackboard. This gives an access point for students to submit assignments to you and makes it a lot easier for you to see the assignments and grade them and provide feedback. To build an assignment link, you will click on Assessments and Assignment. You'll give your assignment a name and in the instructions area, you will want to type some clear instructions for students to follow. A good model to follow is to include a purpose for the assignment, the specific task the students need to engage in, 
and then criteria for success, as well as a due date reminder. You can also attach instructions or other files that students need to an assignment by clicking on Browse Your Computer and attaching a document. If you wish, you can specify a due date in the system. This will appear in the student's My Grades area and on the calendar as the due date for the assignment. You will want to give the assignment a points value. This point value can be zero if you don't intend to give the students any points for this, but you at least have to put some number in here. I'll make this assignment worth 10 points. Then you can click Submit. I now have my assignment link here, and I'm going to scroll it up here to the top. I'm also going to delete my prompt for assignment. And I'd like to show you what this looks like for a student by going into the student preview area. And you can do this in your own courses as well. You can go in and submit your assignments and take quizzes as a student. So I'll go back into my learning modules, week one, module assignments, and there is an assignment link. So as a student, I can click on this assignment link. I can write a submission right in Blackboard, or more often, students will be attaching files for you to look at. So I'm going to attach a document here that I've completed and click Submit. Now as a student, I can see what I've submitted, and I can click OK. Exiting the student preview. As an instructor, I can collect assignments in my Grade Center. So down under the Control Panel, there is a Grade Center area. You can click on Full Grade Center. And I can see this is me as a student user, but you would see your other students' names here as well. And here, this exclamation point means something's been submitted for that assignment. And I can click on the little gray arrow, click on Attempt. And as an instructor, I can now see what the students have submitted to me. I can add comments or mark it up if I wish. And I can grade the student's attempt and click Submit. The points are now awarded to the students, and they can see it in their My Grades area of Blackboard. Let's go back into the Week 1 Module Assignments folder. We went over how to add, collect, and grade assignments. Let's move on to Discussion Boards. Now, Discussion Boards live in the Discussion Boards area of the course, which you can see is the next link below Learning Modules. We haven't been in there yet, so let's go in there now. And there is that Questions Asked and Answer Board and the Virtual Coffee Break Discussion Board that we saw linked in the Course Materials area. But we're going to add a new Discussion Board because we'd like to have a graded Discussion Board for Week 1. So to create a new Discussion Board, you will click on Create Forum. You'll provide a topic, and again, you'll provide clear instructions for students. Scrolling down, here is where you can decide if you would like to have the discussion board be graded. I'm going to make this discussion board graded and worth 15 points. You can add a due date to the system if you wish. And I like to have students be able to edit and delete their own posts, uh, so I like to check those options. Once you have entered all of your information, you can click Submit. And notice we now have a new discussion board here in our discussion boards area. Now that we've made the discussion board, we want to provide a link to this discussion board within our Week 1 Assignments module. So the students have both a reminder and a quick access point to get into this discussion board to make their posts. I'm going to return to my learning modules my week one assignments. And here in this folder, I'm going to make a link to that week one graded discussion board. So here, I'm going to make a link to a tool. So we go to tools, and discussion board is considered a Blackboard tool. So tools, discussion board. We're going to select a specific forum for them to participate in. 
and I'm going to select the week one graded discussion for board form that we just made. Click Next. Now it doesn't copy the directions automatically from the discussion board area, so I just like to copy and paste them so that they're the same in this link as they are in the discussion board itself, and then click Submit. So now I have a link to a particular discussion board that lives in my discussion boards area. Now students can access discussion boards by clicking on the link and it takes them inside the discussion board or they can go to the discussion boards area, look through all the discussion boards for the class and choose which one they'd like to participate in. You and the students can submit messages to the discussion board by clicking on create thread. I'm going to go in as a student navigate to the discussion board through the learning module and click on create thread to post my message. Once I click on create thread I can see the instructions again. I can type a topic and my message. Once I'm ready I can click submit. I'll also be able to view other students and I can click inside and reply to threads that I'm interested in. I'm going to exit the student preview and I'll show you as an instructor how you can grade the discussion board. If you go down to Grade Center, Full Grade Center, you'll see here in my student preview row, I now have an exclamation point in the discussion board assignment. So I can see with this exclamation point that this student has posted something and can be graded. So I click on the arrow and grade user activity. It will collect all of the responses and replies that a student has made in a discussion board. I can review them and give the student a grade. Click Submit. Now the points will show up for them in their My Grades area. Let's return to the week one assignments folder. We've made our discussion board so I'm going to delete the discussion board prompt. And keep in mind you don't have to have a discussion board every week or even an assignment every week. Those are just prompts for things to think about. The last prompt that's here is adding a quiz. So I'm going to show you how to add a short quiz in Blackboard. Kind of like discussion boards where we built a discussion board first and then made a link to it. Quizzes and tests kind of work the same way. Quizzes and tests live in your course tools, tests, surveys, and pools, tests area. So this is where the test will be built and then we will launch them within the course where you want the students to access them. We're going to build a test by clicking build test. We'll give the test a name and description then click Submit. Now I can add questions to my quiz by clicking on Create Question and selecting which question type I would like to add. In this case I'm going to add a multiple choice question. So I click on multiple choice. The question title is optional. I'm actually going to type the question into this question text area. When I scroll below the question stem I have the option of choosing how many answers I wish to be displayed. So for a multiple choice, you may want four different answers. I can type in my four possible answers. And then I can indicate the correct answer for Blackboard by clicking on the radio button next to the one that I want to mark correct. When you're done, you can click Submit. You can then continue to add questions to this test by clicking on Create Question and selecting from the question types. Before leaving this test, I will show you the points area. Blackboard defaults any added questions to 10 points, but you can adjust this to whatever you wish. So maybe this is just going to be worth two points. I can click Submit. And now I have a quiz built that's one question worth two points. So I can click OK. There's a column here that says deployed. It says no. That means this test has not been placed somewhere in the course for students to access it. So that is what we are going to do next. 
I'm going to return to my week one module assignments folder and I'm going to create a launch point here for my mini quiz. So to launch the quiz, you'll click on assessments and then test. And it's going to give you a list of all of the tests that it finds in your test area. So right now we just had the one quiz that we built. So I'm going to select that and click submit. It's automatically going to copy the description from the test that you built in the test area, but you can adjust this as needed with more instructions if you wish. And below here, I can set a variety of options for this quiz. I can set time limits. I can choose when it's going to display and disappear for students. There are lots of options here and there's a lot to think about but you can read through these options and see what would be best for you. Once I'm happy with my quiz options, I can click Submit. I'm gonna drag this up a little bit and delete my prompt. When I create tests and quizzes, just like the assignments and graded discussion board, a column in the Grade Center, Full Grade Center, appears for those tests, and anything that can be automatically graded by Blackboard, such as multiple choice questions, the scores will automatically populate here in your gradebook. If you added an essay question or anything that you manually have to grade, you'll see those green exclamation points for you to go in and assign points for those specific questions that Blackboard couldn't grade. As mentioned before, there is an identical folder with just the dates in the title changed, which, by the way, you can edit those folder names by clicking on uh, the gray arrow next to the title and clicking Edit. So you can adjust these to say anything that you'd like. But each of the folders is identical with the overview and the two uh, sort of subfolders for activities and assignments. Now that we've demonstrated some materials that you can add to your weekly learning modules, let's return to this course orientation folder because this looks quite a bit different than all of those other weeks. In online classes, it's very important that students are provided with a strong orientation that shows them around the course, introduces them to you, their classmates, and helps them practice things like submitting assignments and other activities that you're going to have them engage in in the course. The course orientation module has already been populated with lots of recommended items and verbiage that you are welcome to use. The module overview has essentially been completed, except for one or few tweaks that you'll need to make, but you can do much more editing if you wish and customize it to fit your needs. So let's take a look around. The module overview has already been completed with what is currently available in these activities and assignments folders. You will want to come back and edit this to better fit what you end up with in these folders after making any adjustments that you wish. Inside the module activities folder, first is a welcome message that you can edit to fit your course. For this message, you could use a lot of the verbiage that you had in the welcome announcement, but you may want to add a bit more information about how your students can be successful in the course, what they can expect, or some of your goals for the course. You could also consider adding a photo of yourself here or another photo that you feel represents the course. To add photos in Blackboard, edit the item Click your cursor where you'd like the image to go and click on the insert edit image icon. You can browse your computer for the image and provide an image description and an image title. The image title is what appears as people scroll their mouse over the image and the image description is what would be read by a screen reader, reader if any of your students are using that technology. If you click over to the Appearance tab, you can adjust the size of the image. Photos should really be no more than 600 pixels wide, 
and usually you're going to be good with about 200 pixels wide or less. So actually, since this is just a small headshot, I think I am going to shrink this down to about 105 pixels wide. You can also set where the picture will align. So I might want this to left align with the text wrapping around it. So you can adjust and see, kind of get a preview here of what an image would look like. When you're happy with your image options, you can click insert. And your image will be there in Blackboard. To delete an image at any time, right click on the image and select cut. To edit an image at any time, right click on the image, select image again, and you're back to all of these options for you to adjust. You can also simply attach images like any other file in Blackboard. So if you wish, you could attach an image this way instead if you didn't want to deal with all of the formatting issues because images in Blackboard can definitely be tricky. When you're done with your edits to the welcome message, you can click Submit. So there you can see I have a message with my picture. Next, in the Orientation Module Activities folder, there's a placeholder for you to add a link to a welcome video. Now, videos can be made easily in Blackboard Collaborate Ultra. The Academy has resources on their Rapid Transition to Online page, or you can fill out a support form to get help with this. Next, provided in the folder, is what's called a course link. It's a link that takes students back to the syllabus and schedule page. And last in the activities folder, there is a provided picture of the course menu and descriptions of what can be found in each of those tabs. Obviously, if you decide to change any of these menu items or use them in different ways, you can edit this item attach a different image or remove this image, and edit these options as you need. The first assignment added is a getting to know you discussion board. So this is, as we learned, a link to the discussion board. It really lives in the discussion board area, and here it is here. Now you can edit this discussion board by clicking on the gray arrow and selecting edit. And you can customize this to fit whatever questions that you would like to ask the students to help them introduce themselves. This has been set to not be graded, but you can definitely adjust this and give students some points for participating in the introductory discussion if you wish. You can save your changes by clicking Submit. Let me go back to the orientation module, to the assignments. If you do not wish to use this discussion board, you will want to delete the link here and you will want to delete the discussion board from the discussion boards area. But it's highly encouraged to do some kind of introductory discussion in an online course. The second item in the orientation assignments is a statement of understanding assignment. So this assignment has students download and save a form that acknowledges that they've read the syllabus for the course. They would complete the field shown, save a copy of it, and then submit it to you by clicking on this assignment link. And all of the instructions are provided here. You are free to edit this assignment as you wish to provide a different attachment, change the instructions, or delete the assignment altogether can also change how much the assignment is worth. Really, you can customize this to whatever you see fit. So now we've covered all the way through discussion boards in this summer 2020 template shell. The remaining links in the course are largely more administrative. You may wish to hide the respondus Lockdown Browser link by clicking on this arrow and selecting Hide unless you use Respondus Lockdown Browser in your course. You may also wish to hide this SOI Course Surveys link unless you find that you will be using it in the term. Students will not see any links that you hide unless you come back and make them available again. You are also free to add additional items to your course by clicking on the plus sign here. You can add additional content areas by simply giving them a name. 
You can also add links to other Blackboard tools besides the discussion board, such as Blackboard Collaborate Ultra if you want your students to be using it, by clicking on the tool link and selecting which tool you would like added. So keep in mind that you can customize the course even beyond what you see here. Thank you so much for watching this overview on the Summer 2020 Sandbox. Please reach out to the Academy for Teaching Excellence if you have any questions on this template or if you want any additional Blackboard assistance and help using some of these skills and techniques demonstrated here. Thank you so much for all you are doing for our students.